Woo, baby, it's a nice day. I don't know if it gets any better than this. Oh, I ain't kidding. This is crazy good. Just absolutely beautiful. And check this out. I ain't got no winter gear on. I think we're going to go ahead and put the Wind Rider pants on. But it's a beautiful day. I mean, it's a beautiful day. I mean, come on now. That's just crazy. All right, guys, before we get started today, and we're gonna go out there, we're gonna put fish in the boat, but since I'm gonna take advantage of this beautiful day, and I'm gonna show you guys the Savage 13 and talk to you a little bit about it. This thing absolutely pops. I don't know if you guys can appreciate that in the sunlight, but it absolutely pops. But the, the story on the 13 foot Savage 13 is that it is first and foremost a 13 footer. Check it out. The construction is incredible. The color pops, absolutely pops. And the beauty of it is, you get these additional midsections that turns the Savage 13 into a 15 or a 16 footer. They have eyelets on them that are positioned just for the Savage 13. Again, the beauty is that you're out there fishing and then all of a sudden you decide that you need an additional two or three feet, simply, add the additional midsection, and now you're 15 or 16 feet out there versus the 13 footer. It's absolutely incredible. Now the interesting thing is that on my home leg, I'm a hammer 10 guy. I love 10 footers, okay? But whenever I go to tournament fishing lakes, they're all tournament fishing lakes that we go to, um, I'm a Savage 13 guy. That's what I use 100% of the time. You're going to see this on the trail all the time. But this right here flew off the shelf at Collinsville. And it is just remarkable, the ability to be able to change on the fly. And people seem to really love that. So check it out on the website, 3 because it is on fire. And it just gives you, it's essentially three rods in one. All right, let's catch some fish. Now, I think the only... Depressing thing about today could be that I didn't do a guide trip today. So it's uh, it's one of those days that we talk about in the wintertime where in Southern Illinois, you can get just about any weather, any weather. So we're talking incredible, no wind, beautiful, and these fish are completely schooled up. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be casting a finicky schooled fish. That's what we're gonna be doing. So. I'm not going to show you every cast, of course, but I'll kind of update you as to what we're doing. So we're going to start off with the white hair jig that's available in the combo pack on the website. The white hair jig's been on fire lately, so that's what we're going to start off with, and we're going to go from there. The other thing you guys might want to consider is those paddle tails on the website. They're only $3 right now. You could fill up for the summer. Um, even though we probably won't fish with them in this episode, those paddle tails are what we use throughout the rest of the season, especially the spawn. Boom. Good fish, guys. First fish of the day. This is a tank. This is a good fish. Boom, right there. So there's the school right there, guys. And I try to keep them out there about 25 feet. And the other key thing fishing for schools is, um, we'll talk about techniques today, um, is you really don't want to, to throw that far behind them because these schools are moving, right? And it's just that much harder to see if we can get this guy. Come on, just touch it, buddy. Schools are a lot harder to time. Boom. Good fish here. Um, if you throw way behind them. So I always emphasize that you really got to kind of hit it one foot behind the school to make it efficient and a good cast. So there's our school. Again, we're staying off. These are tactics for schools and we're staying off of them. We're really working it slow. Now, again, I'm fishing with the Hammer 10 here, guys. And uh, it's just an incredible rod, extremely sensitive with a sniping braid. The sniping braid is the 10 pound optimized that I've been using a lot lately. And it's just absolutely crazy sensitive. You're gonna feel those fish that barely touch it. That fish there just barely touched it. Hmm, you see how slow that guy came up, guys? That's crazy. There we go. Right 
Right there, guys. That's a perfect size eater right there. The other tactic I would use, guys, is being sure use a split shot when you can. It just makes it that much easier to find your bait. Um, of course, we have had several episodes where we've been using those 1 16th ounce hair jigs. I think also presentation is a big factor. There we go. Yeah. There it is, guys. So tactics. You know, obviously using a splutch shot helps you identify where your bait's at, which is fantastic. Um, I also like to think that, you know, reducing the size of your bait does, a, does good. Um, although you've seen in a couple of episodes where I've actually increased it to 1 16th, so I don't know how well that actually plays in favor, but I do recommend a 10 footer. I do recommend the hammer 10, not just because it's my own, but because I think a 10 foot allows you to be way more fluid. On that particular catch, what we were doing is we actually just start dragging it into the pile and you're able to do that with a 10 footer. You're getting it away from the trolling motor. I always emphasize getting it away from the trolling motor is a big deal. Uh, even if it is only four foot, which is what a 10 footer tends to give you. So consider the hammer 10. It's a great, it's a great rod. It's a very sensitive rod and it's got a huge amount of backbone, which is awesome. So let's catch a couple more and uh, talk about some other things. Other, the other thing I would like to go is, uh, is braid. Just braid in general, guys. A lot of these bites I won't feel. I'll put my finger on the braid and I will feel it through the braid just because it's just so super sensitive. So consider that as well. All right, guys, we didn't get it on camera, but there's our last fish. Beautiful fish, guys. And we are definitely letting, letting them go. So this is a black crappie, by the way, if you're new to crappie fishing and you watched all the way through here, please do me a favor and follow and subscribe. Uh, love to have you. And uh, we do a lot. Look at that thick back. Look at that thick back. But we started the episode out. We're gonna let them go. Um, we started the episode off talking about the Savage 13, guys. Um, it's a great jigging rod. It's fantastic. I totally encourage you to look at it. It's essentially three rods in one, and the Savage 13 has just been doing great. It's, it is uh, built quality all the way through, and I recommend checking it out. So check it out, uh, guys. Look forward to uh, 2024, and uh, let's get it on.